Hello, good evening and welcome to News at 10 on TV3. It is live also on our website, 3news.com. I am Martin Sedudata. This bulletin is also streaming on our Facebook page. Coming up, here are the highlights of local stories that we have for you. 48 persons who tested positive in Obwase for COVID-19 cannot be traced follow, uh, and be followed up. The Ashanti Regional Health Director, Dr. Emmanuel Tinkorang, has attributed the trend to the fear and stigma and discrimination attached to COVID-19 patients. Government has allayed concerns from the public that it will not, it will soon ease restrictions on school gathering, uh, on, on social gatherings. Information Minister Kujo Ponkroma at a press briefing in Accra said government will call for a national conversation on easing restrictions. Our Deputy Education Minister in charge of basic and secondary education, Dr. Yao Osei Edukchum, says government is not in a rush to reopen schools. According to him, the Ghana Education Service has begun consultations with stakeholders and any decision uh, to reopen schools will be based on science and data. To the courts now and lawyers for founder of Capital Bank at Asian have told an Accra High Court their client is negotiating with the Attorney General to refund 27.5 million CDs to the state. According to his lawyer, Bafo Jewubonsu, Atuasian had already paid an amount of 1.4 million CDs out of the total amount. Those are the local headlines we have for you. Let's find out what's happening elsewhere around the world. We are starting from the United States of America. U.S. has announced it will withdraw from a major accord that permits unarmed aerial surveillance flights over dozens of participating countries. The Open Skies Treaty came into force in 2002 and is designed to boost confidence and assure against, and assure against attacks. But senior U.S. officials said that the country was withdrawing due to the, re the repeat of Russian violations on its terms. Uh, elsewhere around the world, China is proposing to introduce a new security law in Hong Kong that could ban sedition, secession and subversion. The move is likely to provoke strong opposition internationally and in Hong Kong, which was last year rocked by months of pro-democracy protests. And finally, the World Bank has approved $500 million in grants and low interest loans to help countries in East Africa and the Middle East cope after swarms of locust and uh, locusts destroyed vast areas of crops. The worst hit countries, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya and Uganda will receive $160 million immediately. The funding is to help farmers and herders and those in the rural areas and households get fertilizer and seeds for their new crops. All right, so we are going to go straight to our major story we have for you this evening. It has to do with politics because this is your election command center. Anything having to do with elections, we have got you covered, starting from the camp of the NDC. Now, the, uh, well, we'll bring you a quick montage that will go straight into the stories now. All right, the National Democratic Congress has denied suggestions by the New Patriotic Party that the constitutional instrument currently before Parliament was discussed at the IPAC meeting that the NDC boycotted. The Director of Elections and the party's communications director alleged that the governing party and the Electoral Commission are scheming to rig the December polls. NDC presser, it's the second in the series of all the largest opposition party describes as exposing the agenda to rig the elections after its first press conference earlier in the week the general secretary of the mpp john buedu claimed the ec discussed the ci at the very meeting the ndc boycotted now your bomb pay with as usual your my general introduction by the chairperson uh, sitting in at that time now 
Then the Tokuno rose up, said all kinds of things. To the sense of Kasa cry, Kasa on the door, and we don't know three fires. So say, I'm doing my boy cotton or coy. The proposed CI was laid in Parliament on the 17th of March 2020, eight clear days before the 25th of March 2020. IPAC meeting in question. So how then do you say that a CI that has already been laid in Parliament was discussed at a subsequent IPAC meeting? Complete falsehood and a very unintelligent one at that. Again, the NDC says it is amused at the justification response by the National Identification Authority. The NIA again has confirmed our position that the snail pace of Ghana card registration exercise is largely incomplete and that they are now waiting for the COVID-19 situation in the country to subside so they can embark on a mop-up and card distribution exercise in, sub in some regions. The big question therefore is, why will Jim Manson-led EC rely on an identification card, Ghana card, whose issuance is largely incomplete and fraught with several anomalies and demographic disparities. The party further made a revelation. We have written to the Ghana Statistical Service and they have supplied us with information which shows that only 600,000 Ghanaians have turned 18 years this year, only 600,000. Voter re register we have is made up of 16 million people. And so, if on grounds of public health, we even decide that this year we will not do limited registration exercise, it doesn't change, or it wouldn't change much. Very interesting thoughts there from the camp of the NDC. Let's find out from... Um, a lawyer, um, legal private practitioner, and a lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology Law Faculty, Hans Kodia. Good evening, sir, and thank you for making time to speak with us. Hello, Mr. Kodia. Hello, Mr. Hans Kodia. We're working the lines to get a connection, a good connection to lawyer Hans Kodia. So the concern has been that the NDC thinks that if the EC goes ahead to allow people to register, they may be exposing more people to the coronavirus, which is a major international and national health concern. But what does the Constitution say? The Constitution clearly stipulates in Article 42 that every citizen who is Ghanaian has turned 18 years and above and is of sound mind has the right to vote and register. And if we want to maybe waive this on health grounds, does the law allow the Electoral Commission to do that? That is what we want to do. Uh, we want to find out from uh, lawyer Hans Kodia, who's joined us again uh, online. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your time. Mr. Kodia, can you hear me? Unfortunately, we are unable to hear uh, lawyer Hans Kodia uh, this evening. But uh, when we do raise him on the line, we'll put a few questions to him regarding uh, what we can do. Clearly, these are uncharted territories for almost every country, and specific, specifically for Ghana. We're going into an election, and a lot of these teething problems need to be resolved as quickly as possible. Will the Electoral Commission be able, or will, will the Electoral Commission be right in denying some 600 thousand persons from registering, although they are turning 18 this year. And on health grounds, the NDC says that you don't necessarily have to allow them to register because of health reasons. The EC has given its own uh, parameters that it will observe during the registration process. But what does the Constitution allow the Electoral Commission to do in cases like this? Uh, Lawyer Kodia, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Thank you for connecting with us. Uh, let's start from what the NDC is saying, and that is part of a bigger debate of whether or not the Electoral Commission will go ahead and register. They say they will. There's been concerns as to why they should or why they should not. On health grounds, can the Electoral Commission deny persons from registering purely on health grounds? Do they have that power? All right, thank you very much, sir. Um, in the first place, I wish to state that the Supreme Court of this country has interpreted and or provided judicial interpretation on 
Article 42 of the Constitution. Article 42 of the Constitution imposes a strict constitutional mandate on the Electoral Commission to ensure that any person above the age of 18 and is of sound mind mm. is permitted to be registered to take part in public elections. This constitutional mandate cannot be negotiated. It cannot be compromised in any way. Irrespective of what is the happening. If the president declares a state of emergency, that would be a different situation. But once the person or the persons have, agreed, uh, have attained the age of 18, even if it is one person, the Electoral Commission has no constitutional mandate to say that because of a particular situation, mm. that person will not be permitted to register and vote. If the Electoral Commission purports to do that, clearly the acts of the Electoral Commission may be said to be inconsistent with Article 2, Clause 1 of the 19 of the 2 Constitution. And any person who suffers such an act is permitted to go to the Supreme Court and have a declaration to that effect. So in my opinion, the Electoral Commission cannot in any way compromise Article 42 mm. in the name of coronavirus or any pandemic. A person has the right to vote, and as I said, the Supreme Court has expanded the constitutional parameters even of Article 42. And it is so clear and unambiguous that the Electoral Commission has no discretion in this regard. So the contention by the NDC party cannot hold against this constitutional provision. And looking at the timelines we have, we have barely six months to the election. The Electoral Commission is saying it could pull this off within two months. From your understanding, if anybody unfortunately is disenfranchised or is unable to register within this period because it looks as if things are going to be done in a haste. The normalcy we've known over the last few years is not going to be the same. There are going to be fewer people in the queue. There's going to be spacing. There's going to be regular washing of hands. All these protocols that will be observed, if it should affect someone and the person is unable to register, can the person take on the electoral commission or seek redress elsewhere? Yes, if someone is not registered and the person has attained the age of 18 or above, then the law empowers that particular person, if his whole desires, to go to the Supreme Court and seek a declaration that he said. As a matter of fact, every citizen according to Article 42 has a right. When you have attained the age of 18 or above, you have the right to be registered to take part in public elections or the plenary. Therefore, if there is any situation in the country, unless the individual decides not to vote, but if the individual wants to be registered and to take part in any public elections, mm. looking at Article 42 and the decision by the Supreme Court in 2010, I do not think any situation may be used as, as a means to deprive or to disenfranchise someone. I do not think. I'm not talking about legalistic compliance, but I'm saying that that is what the law says. The law says register the person to take part. If we have um, a pandemic and the president has declared a state of emergency, that would be a, a, a different situation. But okay. we are not there yet. Okay. So, however short the time is, last com uh, uh, national commission should make provision for those who have attained the age of 18. 18. Uh, despite the fact that the number, according to uh, NDC is uh, 600,000, mm. even if it is one person, the Electoral Commission cannot disregard that particular person's constitutional okay. right. Okay. All it right. will not be possible. All right. And finally, um, the Electoral Commission has also come out to say that two key documents they would allow for people to use or new registrants to use is the passport and then also a birth certificate. Concerns have been raised uh, about these two documents, saying that not almost every Ghanaian who is turning 18 now could have a passport or may have a passport. In this regard, if someone is unable to go and register not having these cards, they have the same legal rights as someone who has been disenfranchised, no? Yes, if the, if the Electoral Commission makes it very impossible or practically difficult for someone to exercise his rights under Article 42, Mm. then, in my opinion, it may constitute disenfranchisement, you know. So, if the 
Electoral Commission has the right to ensure that people who have attained the age of 18 or above are registered. And the Electoral Commission places some impediments on the actualization of that right. Then it may constitute the person's right, the denial of the person's right to vote. And I think a person who goes through that can go to the Supreme Court and seek a declaration that he had attained the age of 18, but the Electoral Commission has made it practically difficult or impossible mm. for him or her to exercise his or her franchise. And I think, looking at the provisions of the Constitution, the Supreme Court will make the relevant declaration to that effect in the interest of the person's political right guaranteed under the 1992 Constitution, specifically Article 42. Okay. Thank you very much for clarifying this issue for us. Uh, lawyer Hans Kodia is a private legal practitioner and lecturer at the University of um, uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology uh, Law Faculty. This is News at 10 on TV3. On this same issue, though, the minority in the House of Parliament uh, says that they are going to file a motion against uh, this that is already on the floor for discussion. It's eight days into its 20-day maturity period. We'll keep an eye on it as your election command centre and keep you posted. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Thank you for staying with TV3. This is News at 10. I am Martin Nasir Dudati. The Accra Metropolitan Assembly has demolished more than 400 structures at Jamestown to pave way for the construction of a fish and harbour. The Assembly will, however, not compensate victims affected by the exercise. It was about 12 p.m. Thursday when the news team arrived at Jamestown. Structures numbering over 400 were demolished, rendering hundreds of fisher folk and squatters homeless. Many were seen trying to salvage the remaining of their belongings. The chief fisherman of Jamestown, Ni Amawulu, said residents were informed about the demolition exercise. One month ago, uh, Titus Grover, the Minister of Transport, came and handed over the site to the people. And we he gave us authority to inform everybody that there will be this demolition. Some residents, however, disputed the claims. The Jamestown Fishing Harbour Project has witnessed five sword cutting ceremonies by previous government without any significant construction taking place. Head of Public Relations at AMA, Gilbert Ni Ankara, assured all is set for the project to take off. We've given them ample time. We have engaged the fisher folks. Don't forget this very area belongs to the fisher folks. So if you speak to the head of the fisher folks themselves, you will understand. The Jamestown Fish and Harbour project is in three major parts. It involves the dredging of about 118,000 cubic meters harbour basing and shipping channels, construction of hydraulic structures composed of berth, seawall and a breakwater, and construction of administration, production and supporting facilities, including an office building, kindergarten, trading market, processing area, commercial area and other production and supporting facilities. And in other news tonight, the police media team witnessed an accident at the Ashaiman runabout earlier today. The team was out Thursday afternoon to monitor the level of compliance regarding the presidential directives on COVID-19 at Ashaiman, which is near Tema. Personnel from the Tema MTTD responded swiftly to the situation. Uh, the police helped to evacuate the victims and restored normalcy in terms of traffic flow. Preliminary police assessment revealed that the vehicle in question was in a rickety state. The Tema Regional MTTD Commander ACP Joseph Owusu-Bempa 
cautioned drivers to ensure their vehicles are in good shape before they hit the roads. And that's how we bring the bulletin to a close. I'm Martin Nesiridati. Thank you very much for watching. If you visit 3news.com, you'll find some more news there. Do have a good evening and as always, stay positive. Bye for now.